tonight and our evening service could start at 6 o'clock and we'll be having our participation service. And uh, so if uh, you've got something you'd like to do in the service for you, come on out this evening and, and we'll have a good time with the Lord. Also, we have uh, uh, next uh, this next Sunday, uh, Danny Funderburg is supposed to be here in the evening service. Oh, that's been canceled because of some complications of where churches have canceled out on him. <coughs> and so we're going to try to uh, have him in here on the 23rd of August uh, to bring him in into our, our midst. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, the more on, on, on what it's going to be morning or evening service later on, I'm just flexible to work with him and see if uh, what he can come up with. And uh, so on, so it's like a joke and act, I guess, with ministry right now and the things that are going on in our midst. Also, um, we do have uh, Broadway Quartet will be with us two weeks from today in the morning service. And uh, so uh, uh, we're looking forward to that. You, uh, we always enjoy having them here, a wonderful anointing quartet, and uh, they're a real blessing uh, to our souls. Uh, I would like to say this, uh, uh, we, uh, the, the, the governor asked the churches to be closed for two weeks, that was today and next Sunday, we closed for two weeks all services, but we don't really have to put a better schedule and I feel like that if we will be wise, we won't have to cancel any services, but that we social distance and we pay attention, okay? Now, I really believe it's kind of like being a, a child of God with this coronavirus. We, uh, you know, when we first started out, many of us were really careful and, you know, were very vigilant about this thing, and now we're starting to get careless. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is, whether it's spiritual or physical, you get careless, that's when you get in trouble. You know, my dad uh, told us boys, he said, now when you're mowing hay, and he had an old sickle mower, he says, uh, you, and he'd get clogged up, and he'd say, now, uh, what you do is that you, you turn that thing off and uh, when you go to clean it out. And so that's what he taught us, but one day after we were all grown, Dad was uh, on the tractor one day, and he got off the tractor. Just all the things that he had taught us, and he just got careless, and he lost them tips of his fingers in the moment. And that's what I'm saying about spiritual things. We go to sleep on God sometimes, don't we? Amen. And then it gets us into trouble. We wind up in a, in a world of hurt. But uh, uh, remember these things are coming up. And then also, uh, scheduled in September, if it's going to be feasible, uh, we, we, we do have uh, Michael Cohn scheduled to be in here on the I believe it's the 23rd of September. And then the, we have on the 19th of October, we have a revival schedule with Brother Ronnie Spriggs. And so those are some of the dates uh, that are coming up for us in, in the future. Um, I have, uh, and so I don't want to forget this announcement. Tomorrow night, starting tomorrow night at 6.30, we're meeting here at the church for prayer. And I want to tell you that God has shown me something. Now, you, you might think I'm a little crazy, but I want you to know this. You may not think I know, but I do stay in touch with God. I'm your pastor. That's my business. And I'm concerned about our situation, about our nation we're living in, about the direction the church is going. It's going away from God. The church as a whole is going away from God. It's not coming back to God. And uh, the Lord gave me a vision, and I asked him, I've been praying, 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 talking to the Lord. I said, God, I said, why aren't you helping us? It seems like this thing is getting worse rather than better. But they're doing all this, and they don't take a whole lot for me to figure this out. I'm not very bright. I'm not the sharpest tack in the box. But can I tell you that man started this thing, but he can't end it. He can't finish it. And so we've got it until God moves and he makes a decision to take it from our midst. And so, God told me, though, I, I had a vision, and here was the church over here, and God's over here, and he's, he's, uh, he's uh, to the side, and he's back of the church. And you know, in the book of Revelation, it talks about that, that Jesus walked among the golden candlesticks. Do you remember that? Yeah. God's not walking among the 
churches today. Man. You're not doing that. But it said, it said that there in Revelation chapter 1 2, when chapter 1 it talks about where that he's, uh, he's in the midst of the churches of the seven golden candlesticks. But I said, Lord, why are you there? And we're right here and nothing, nothing's happening. And he said, Well, he said, Y'all not doing what you're supposed to do. He said, You're drawn away from me. He said, I'm not moved. But he said, the churches as a whole are drawn away from me. And I said, what do we need to do? And he said, well, you need to repent and get back where you need to be. And, you know, sometimes we, and I can say that and say, well, I, I'm just supposed to God as I want to be or I think I should be. But I want to tell you something. You can't get too close to God. Amen. And if you get where God really wants you to be, he's going to cost you something. Amen. It's going to cost you time and great sacrifice. You need to listen to God. Amen. Or you have no idea what He's going to demand of you. Right. But now we're praying, we're praying from all from here on out, as long as we have to. For me here at 6 30 each night, other than our well, we'll be here at 6 30 for our prayer and Bible study on Wednesday night, and but we'll be meeting those other nights uh, through the <coughs> Saturday, uh, that we'll be here at 6 30 to pray. And folks, we're not coming to take prayer requests either. I want to tell you that right now. If you need me to pray for somebody else, you tell me and I'll do it. But that night, we're coming to do one thing, and that is to seek God for yourself personally. Find out where God wants you to be and where you're really at with God. And if you're not His will, then He will show you how to get there. And I really believe when we begin to move toward God, and God is going to remove it. He showed me that he would move this from our midst. And it ain't going to go the way. It is actually going to be work. Yes, sir. What Monday are we going to have a street service? Just in next one. When we have what? The street service. Well, we won't, it won't be this Monday. No. Okay, next Monday? Well, <coughs> it's possible. But that was, we scheduled that for maybe 7 o'clock or something. I'm not sure yet, okay? Okay. But we will announce that. We'll have that one more by next weekend on the street service. So uh, uh, I, 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 I implore you to come out. If you want this thing removed, if you don't like the way that the, the government and things is, and, and there are, a lot of them are, have our best interest at heart, but if it's forcing us to do things that we've never done before, it's not a norm. And uh, well, I don't want it to become a normal either. I really believe that God can change this picture from what he has shown me. So I'm trusting him that he's going to do that. But I'm willing to do what I need to do to see God bring about an end to this thing. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Now, I, uh, Brother Buddy Lyles uh, had, uh, has had an accident, not since he started on the road. But the doctors gave some medicine, and it's kind of messing him up. So he's going to he's going to do whatever the Lord will him to do Amen. here, or what his body will. Amen. He's going to minister to us, shows when he needs a lot of prayer. I told him I, he's going to try to get back to Florida. But uh, I told him I said, well, if I can help him get there, I'll be glad to do that. But uh, let's let's remember him uh, as he comes to minister to us here in a few minutes and pray for our brother and uh, also. Uh, Remember, let's pray for one another. Let's pray for uh, the needs. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rice has coronavirus. His son-in-law uh, has, has a son of coronavirus. And uh, there are other people that uh, have this and uh, that are local and not far from us, you know. And so we need to be very much in prayer for these people that have contact with this stuff and that have come down with it. And uh, also pray for the families that are grieving today. They need our prayers. Remember all the laws, those of your family and my family. Someone else. Someone else will pray for you. Family Janelle's church and Amber Hart. All right, yes, okay. Remember Janelle and Trinity? Outreach. Outreach church. Uh, they had vacation Bible school, and now some of them have. COVID-19. So be very much in prayer uh, uh, for a uh, wonderful group of people. And uh, But you know what? God's no respect or person of the devil ain't either. You know, the devil will attack anybody that he has an opportunity to do. And we're going to thank God it's mild cases. 
For surgery. For surgery. surgery. Yeah. All right, I remember Brother Tyler, he's going to be going Tuesday for a surgery. Mm -hmm.
couple days ago, they called the family in. But she's doing better, praise the Lord. So keep praying for her and for her family. Someone else. Remember me and my family, Don. All right, I remember Brother Dan and his family.
morning, uh, America, some people in America is going crazy, and the rest of us are crawling into a hole, and we're not talking to God. I noticed that several big cities around our nation last night had some people killed, uh, lots of people injured, uh, our police. Many, many bad things happening across our country last night. Louisville, Kentucky, things are going on. And so we, we need to pray about those. I know I meant to mention that and I forgot it. I hope you are praying. For this is not what God wants to take place in our midst. And we will, after he, uh, after he finishes, we'll get a love off of him, okay? Yeah. But Jimmy, have this offer of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being able to be back in our house. Lord, it's just wonderful to be here this morning. This is what I'm
joy that led me with the saints who forsake what a blessed happy meeting just inside me soon Jesus, 
there's a better way. So trust him this very day. Look toward the heaven. You're never
nature. Um, one of the things I've seen that's been a, a blessing to me is that I've seen uh, and read about people that are believing in God. It's, it's not enough. I mean, we don't see the numbers. Uh, you know, when you're when you're on Facebook, sometimes you see some things that are just not pretty at all, and uh, I hate that. And, but I want you to know something is so good to be able to read for God has moved in a life and He's worked miracles. We need more miracles, miracles taking place in our society. This time, Brother Jim is going to come and some song. Would you make him welcome? Praise the Lord. And I'm all the Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, uh, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you? This is my text verse. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you, a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but that ye that trouble that but he that troubles you shall bear his own judgment, whosoever he be. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day to come and worship you in spirit and truth. Father, I pray today that, Lord, that whatever troubles us today, whatever hinders us in our life, that, Father, that, Lord, that we would just turn it over to you, O God. And, Father, I pray that you anoint these old lips of clay. Father, I pray that, God, you take me, you use me, Lord. Help me to rightly divide your word, O God. And, Father, I pray that your word would go forth in power and truth, O God. And, Father, it would go out there and change hearts and lives. And I pray that, Father, that, Lord, you have given us open hearts and hearing ears today. And, Lord, I pray that we have a teachable spirit. And, Father, I pray that, God, that your will be done here in this sanctuary. And, Father, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for it all. For it is in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, to say that Paul had, a, uh, had a, uh, found a, a lot was going on in this Galatian church was uh, just to say that he found a lot that's true. And he found a lot that was going on that he didn't like. And I'll just give you a little background as to what was going on uh, to the Galatian church in chapter 1. They had left the truth, which is Christ. They were questioning Paul's apostleship. In chapter 2, they were trying to justify themselves by works and not by faith in Christ. <coughs> they were trying to frustrate the grace of God. In chapter 3, Paul asked them, uh, who had been bewitched them? Paul asked them, what has moved them from the faith, their faith in Jesus Christ? 
And in chapter 4, he tells them that Christ came to redeem them from the law. Praise the Lord. Now here in chapter 5, he's wanting to tell them to maintain their Christian liberty. And he was telling them not to go into bondage again. Now, it, we'll go on in chapter 6. He tells them to return the ones, uh, to reform the ones who had failed with gentleness. He told them to bear one another's burdens. He's telling them that, that they, what they sold, they shall reap. And he also was telling them not to grow weary in serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, that was just in short the, 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 uh, the first six chapters right here. But I want to, well, I want to uh, uh, concentrate on what is, is happening here inside the, uh, the Galatian church. And I dare say what is happening inside the Galatian church is happening in the church of America today. Now, I know that it is. I have seen it to a certain extent with my own eyes. But I want, you to, I want you to look at these first two words here. It says, stand fast, glory to God. And it, uh, it comes, that, that stand that fast comes from the Greek word stako. It means to be stationary, to persevere, to persist, hallelujah. Also, we have in front from the Greek to stop, to stand still, to stand immovable, to stand firm, glory to God. And unfortunately today, we have uh, Christians that are not standing firm on the word of the Lord, like we should. Now, as, as we go to title, my message today is, what is hindering you? Now, there's been a lot of things in my life that has hindered me uh, to a certain extent from serving the Lord. Satan will put things in your life that will hinder you to try to get you to move, not to stand on the solid rock that is Jesus Christ. But also, we put things in our own lives that will hinder us from serving the Lord. And we'll, we'll get on that uh, in a little, we'll speak about that a little bit later on. But I want you to remember that no matter, just like uh, Brother Virgil said over there, that no matter what comes against you, the, whatever Satan throws at you, you're only going to be victorious if you stand firm on the Word of God. Amen. How did, when, when Satan was tempting uh, Jesus, how did Jesus answer him? He didn't answer him by giving him this or that. No, he quoted the Scriptures yeah. of the Lord, yeah. praise yeah. God. And that is the only way that we will be able to stand against the wiles of that devil. Right. And I'm telling you, one day, glory to God, we're not going to have to do that no more. You know, I, I, I said, and I was thinking uh, uh, the other night about, uh, uh, we was up there on the square, and I, I, I can't remember who it was. It was either Isaiah or it was Virgil, but I, got, I think it was Isaiah. But I got to thinking about the old devil. And I got to thinking about uh, Christ and how when he was in that tomb, uh, uh, when they had crucified him and they laid him in that tomb, and they said on the third day he arose. But in between that, the Bible says that he went down and he got the keys, glory to God, from, from Satan. And you know, uh, you know, I, 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 can, I can just picture that. And uh, you know, and Satan thought he had him defeated, glory, glory to God. But I'm telling you what. Oh, did wasn't me in for a very big surprise when Jesus Christ showed up and said, Hand me those keys. Amen. There was nothing that old boy could do but hand them keys over. He couldn't fight against him like he fights against us, but no glory to God. He had to give them keys over to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. All right, now let's get back on this, on the be standing fast. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong, glory to God. He was telling the Galatian church to stand on the word of God, not fall back into legalism. What, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to fall back into the old law. But that's not the only thing they were trying to do. We'll go on. Philippians 1, 27 says, Only let your conversation 
Being as it becometh the gospel of, Jesus, of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Amen. See, there were some divisions a little bit there too. But there are also some divisions in the church. Amen. The church is not of one mind. The church is not, not of one accord. They're not they're coming together. And I believe that this virus, or whatever you want to call it, the children life after because I pronounced it wrong. But I'm telling you this. This virus ought to be driving the child of God to church and not away from it. It's only going to be when we repent. What does 2 Chronicles 7 14 say? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves to pray and turn from their wicked ways, and I, I can't quote the rest of it. Essentially, if we turn back to God, God, it says in the latter day, He would heal the Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's what it's going to take, folks. Amen. We have got to get back and let God be God. Uh, now let's go on. First Thessalonians says, for, we, for now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Listen. If we don't stand fast in the Lord, Satan is going to have a heyday with me and you. That's right. yeah. He's going to do whatever he wants to do to me and you. But if we stand fast with the Word of God and we combat him with the Word of God like Jesus did when he was tempted, Glory to God, there ain't nothing he can do. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I want you, I want to go on, and I want to go on to that word. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Oh, glory to God. I'm glad I've got liberty today. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But I want, to, uh, let, I want to go back to the stand a minute. I, I, I jumped ahead of myself. But... Here's something else that we've got to stand fast in. In willing subjection to the authority of God. Amen. We've got to. Alright. Have you ever had a problem with authority? I have. I have. It's one thing to have a problem with authority under the laws of this land that you don't think is right. But it's entirely another thing to have a problem with God's authority. Amen. Because we know God is right. right. Okay? We can be wrong. God is always right. Amen. All right, now let's go on to liberty. Now that word liberty means to, to be free, to exempt, unrestrained, not bound by an obligation, free from the yoke of the Mosaic law. Listen, Paul had founded this church and he had shown them the way that they were supposed to live. He had shown them the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. But here they were trying to go back and somebody had come in and tried to get them to go back into the old Mo 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 Moabite law and it just it, it, it can't work that way. Let's go on. Now Strong's that word liberate. To stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He has liber liberated us. Amen. Glory to God. Me, my, my mouth is dry. It says, listen, means to set at liberty from the dominion of sin. That's strong to Paul was telling them that they lived in the legal relationship to God. It wasn't because God willed it. Listen. You are pretty free much to do however you want to in this in this land today. Got to start to stand. I'm telling you, that's, that's not real liberty. Real liberty comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. We get it mixed up. Right. God pleads with us. He pleads with us through his word to walk in his strength, in his will, glory to God. And, and sometimes, like, you know, I'm, I'm sad to say, sometimes I've not always walked in His will. But every time I ever got out of His will, I got myself into a whole mess of trouble. Amen. Freedom is a gift that Jesus has given us and will receive by faith. <coughs> Listen, Christ made us free. We can't free.
free ourselves. Amen. We were in bondage. We were set and doomed to hell. Right. And if Christ hadn't went to that cross, then we would have got what we deserved. Amen. And that's hell. We, that's where we would have went. But I thank my Lord that he went to that cross. Hallelujah. Amen. And he died for me. Glory to God. To free me from that sin. Glory. Amen. You know what happens when we try to free ourselves? We just get entangled and keep getting more entangled and more entangled into the bondage that Satan sets before us. Right. We can't free ourselves. Liberty. You know, people, they live for liberty. This nation was founded on the, to be able to have liberty, to, to worship God in the manner that he was, they wanted to worship him. Go back and read your history book. They left England because the king was telling them how they had to worship. Mm -hmm. But you did, did you know that the liberty that we have here in the United States is an earthly liberty? It, and that's all it is. It's an earthly liberty, but it's not the liberty that we can have in Christ. The liberty is our freedom from having to earn our way to God. Amen. That's what true liberty is. The freedom from sin and guilt and condemnation. Glory to God. Freedom from the penalty and power and freedom from the presence of sin. Oh, glory to God. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. But it goes on. I want you to listen to what, to what it says. For God sent not his Son into the world and condemn the world, but through him that we might be saved. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Stand fast means it takes effort. It takes effort to stay in this place of liberty. Yes, amen. But did you know that someone that Jesus has set free can still take themselves back into bondage? That's right. Amen. amen. And it's easy to do. That's right. It's easy to do. I want you to listen to something. Someone that he just said, Paul was telling them, why are you putting yourself back into bondage? Why are you putting yourself back into slavery? Back in the sin. The great evangelist, and he was a wonderful evangelist, D.L. Moody, illustrated this point by quoting an old former slave woman in the South following the Civil War. Being a former slave, she was confused about her status and asked, Now, is I free, or been I not? When I go to my old master, he says I am free. And when I go to my own people, they say I am. And I don't know whether I am free or not. Some people told me that Abraham Lincoln signed a proclamation, but Master says he didn't. He didn't have any right to it. Do you know what the devil's going to tell you? He's going to tell you, you're, you're still not a bond. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Glory to God, I'm going to tell you. They called that an emancipation for a proclamation. What well, Abraham Lincoln done. Abraham Lincoln signed for the slave. But glory to God, you know what Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary? He signed your emancipation for a proclamation. Yeah. Glory to God. He freed you from sin. Hallelujah. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to walk in it. Glory to God. No. You have Jesus Christ as your Savior. Hallelujah. And you are free from that bondage. Glory. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. But you know, many Christians are confused. They're confused today. Oh. Listen, Peter said in Acts 15, 10, it says, Now therefore, why do you tempt God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? When you go into bondage, you have a yoke upon your neck. And it will turn you any way that it wants to turn you when you get so steeped in sin that you can't help yourself no more. Right. 
You take, you take drugs, you take alcoholism, you take whatever to, to ease your mind or to ease your nerves, and it does nothing but drive you further and further and further into a well of despair that you can't climb out of. But glory to God if we have Jesus Christ and we stand fast on His Word. There is nothing. The gates of hell, the gates of hell, and the demon dogs of hell can come against you. Amen. And glory to God, they can't do nothing with you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the Jews here in Galatians, not, they, they, can't, they wasn't able to justify themselves before God. Before the law. So they shouldn't put a heavy burden upon everybody else. Oh, and they shouldn't put a burden upon the Gentiles, too, that they're trying to come in. Listen, certain Jewish teachers of that day spoke of the law of Moses as a yoke, but they used that term in a favorable light. You know, God, or Satan will use God's word, he will twist it. And we will fall for it. Right. If we don't know the word of God. Amen. He's done that for centuries. Centuries upon centuries upon centuries. Right. He has twisted the word of God and led God's people astray. Amen. Paul saw here in the book of Galatians that that legalism was a yoke of bondage. And that's why he told them that it was slavery. They were going back into what they had been delivered out of. Does nothing. That yoke of bondage does nothing but entangle us. Listen, we can try hard to work and work and work. We can pull God's plan. But I'm telling you, if we try to do it without Him, we're going to get in trouble. Amen. We're going to get in trouble. That's why we have to stand fast on His Word. Amen. we got to wait upon the Lord to tell us what, we, what, what He wants us to do. Amen. See, that's Saul's problem in the Sunday school lesson this morning. Saul couldn't wait upon the Lord and it got him into a whole mess of trouble right. that he couldn't get out of. It. And it will get, up, get us in a mess of trouble that we can't get out of. It. Oh, listen. Morris said, Jewish teachers counted up now listen to me. Jewish teachers counted up to 613 commandments to keep in the law of Moses. Even to remember them all was a burden and keep them bordered on the impossible. Small wonder that Paul referred to subjecting them oneself to them all as entering into slavery. Amen. 613 laws. That was 603 too much. Right. See, God only gives ten during the Old Testament right. for us to obey. All these others was given by man. Right. And what he thought needed to be done. Verse 2 says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, If you be circumcised, it shall profit you nothing. When the Galatians embraced, went back into legal, legalism, then Christ couldn't profit them anything because they were going back into the old law. Right. When they embraced the law as a, as a rule of walking with God, then they had to let go of Jesus and His grace. They put themselves back into the law. When we sin. When we try to do it on our own, he is no longer our righteousness. We have kept turning it for self. God help us. A lot of people in the world today are trying to earn themselves into heaven. A lot of religions will tell you that you have to earn yourself your way into heaven. Jesus Christ is my way. Words will fall. But words ain't going to get you in. That's right. Listen. We 
for the Galatians to receive the circumcision, the ritual that tested, and the Gentiles that was trying to him, they testified that a Gentile was coming under the law, it meant that he no longer trusted in Jesus as his righteousness. This is what Calvin said. The legalists among the Galatians wanted them to think that they could have both. Sound familiar today? We've got religions that are telling you that you can sin and still have God. Right. Jesus and a law relationship with God. That's, these, that's what the legalists were telling The lawyers were telling them. Paul told them that this was not an option open to them. The system of grace and the system of the law are incompatible. Whoever wants, uh, whoever wants to have Christ loses the hope. Right. You cannot plead the grace of Christ when you have incurred another mode of justification. Well, yeah. I, I tell you what, I, this, this right here, I, I sat in, in, in that cabin in Gatlinburg and I was, uh, God had kept bringing me back to the book of Galatians and and. You know, I, I love it. I, everybody else had went out. And boy, I love when I get my home time in the Lord. Amen. I love when God starts speaking to me. And he, and, and he communes with me. Just as Samuel was communing with Saul on the rooftop of the house. I love when God starts talking to me. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, Paul was doing his best. Tell them plainly that when Jesus, he died on that cross, he poured out his blood, glory to God. He, 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 he went through agony, and he, and he loved us, and it Christ did nothing by keeping, by, by hanging on to the old law. Because behold, I Paul saying to you, Paul put everything he had, everything he had into that appeal. Tell him. Have you ever hold, heard the Holy Spirit pleading with you? Don't do this. Amen. Don't do this. I have. Many, many, many times. Sometimes I listen. Sometimes I did. But we always must be willing to listen and to obey the pleading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Luther said, Tongue cannot express nor heart can see what a terrible thing it is to make Christ weak. Mm. And that's exactly what the Galatians were trying to do. Listen, when you embrace the old law, you must embrace the whole law. Okay? And that's what Paul was telling them. Verse 3 says, we became debtors to keep the whole law, and that is a heavy debt. When we come to the basis, when we come to God on the basis of our own thinking, we don't accomplish anything. It's only when the Spirit draws us. Hallelujah. That God can work in us. No amount of obedience. Anybody that kept the law had to be perfect. It left no room for disobedience. If you messed up one time, that was it. See, the, the thing about the law is that it's like speeding. Nobody here has ever done that, have you? I got that problem with that. I'll get that. But it's like speeding. See, you, you, get a, you get pulled over by a car. And you say, or I've been, I've done this, I give to the church, I work in the church, and I do this, I do that, and do whatever. You get to bring up all the good things in your life that you've ever done. But you're still guilty of breaking the law. That's what Paul was trying to tell you. Go back to grace. And I thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, no matter how many times I mess up, if I will repent, glory to God. Amen. 
I'm just as asking if that's by name shame. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. They were telling the Gentiles that they had to be circumcised to receive salvation. They told them he'd fallen from grace by keeping the law. They had stepped out of grace and back into the law. When, we, when they embraced the law as their rule of walking with God, they departed from Jesus and His grace. When we choose sin to sin, we depart from Jesus and His grace. They, they were estranged from Christ and His saving grace. Now the, uh, the Galatians were worshiping law, not Christ and His grace. The danger, listen, let me tell you something. The danger of falling from grace is real. That's right. You can fall. And you can fall hard. Amen. We must be vigilant that we don't fall from God's grace. Now, in verse 5 and 6, Paul was telling them that, that in Jesus Christ, the circumcision and uncircumcision, they looked at it. That has nothing to do with us today. It had everything to do with them back then when they were following the law. We have the hope. taking us and giving us a home in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Listen. We can't earn it through good works. Right. It's by our faith. All right. By our faith in God and what he did on that cross. When we that word wait in Greek is it's uh after Nekoma and it's to expect, to look. Let's go back and read five and six here. I don't want to It says, for we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision by the being thing nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Now, it speaks, that word wait, it speaks of an attitude of intense yearning and eagerly waiting for something. I tell you what, there's days that I can't wait for Jesus Christ to come back. I want him to come back and just rid me of this world. Amen. Of all the trials, of all the tribulations, of all the sicknesses that I might have in my body. I look forward to a day, glory to God, that I had I no longer have to worry with that. Amen. Oh. Earnestly seeking. Faith, verse 6, faith working through love. If her faith doesn't work, it isn't it, through love, it isn't real faith. If you have faith in, in Jesus Christ, you're going to have love right. for your brother and your sister. Glory to God. Now, but her love alone isn't enough. But her love must have faith and abiding trust in Jesus Christ. We have to abide in Him. Right. In Him and us. Glory to God. Faith must work through us. Through love. Herod had faith that John the Baptist was a prophet. But he didn't have love. What did he do to John? He killed him. Real saving faith will, faith will work through love. Sure. Alright, let's go to verse 7. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Hmm. Paul remembered how they started good in Galatians. And he reminded them of that. He asked them, who hindered you? Somebody had came in and was teaching that doctrine of legalism again. Teaching them that they had to go back and observe those laws. That they can have both. But he also reminded them that they must finish well. How are you going to finish that? Let me ask you that question. How are you going to finish this race that we are on. Paul said we are in a race. Right. How are we going to finish? He knew that the false teaching came from a person. It doesn't say who that person was. No, I did. But at the root of it, at the very root of it, they were leading Jesus Christ. 
for the, the false and empty teaching of man. Right. This case, legalism. Man brought it in, okay? Not God. Hindered the definition a metaphor derived from military operations. The word signifies to break up a road as to render it impassable and is therefore the opposite of to clear a way. They were doing well until someone came in and broke up that road that they were traveling. That's right. We've got to be careful. Yes. We've got to be careful. Who we listen to. Who we listen to. Now, what is hindering us in our walk with the Lord today? Let me tell you something. Anything causes you to sin is a hindrance. That's right. It's plain. That's as plain as can. Now, Here's something else. Unless you see it, anything that hinders you to come into this church building is sin. Amen. Flat out rebellion against God. Anything that, when the preacher calls for prayer, like he is next week, anything that hinders you from coming to that, unless it's an emergency or something very serious, sin, the rebellion. It keeps you from obeying the Lord. You need to get rid of it. Amen. Verse 9. A little leaving, leaving the whole lump. Now, for the most part, when the Jews talked about leaving, it was a bad thing. Now, he drives, Paul drives the warning home. He's telling you, you can't dabble in this. We as Christians cannot dabble in sin. Amen. It will come back to bite us. Right. And what is that old saying? Sin will take you farther than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, and, and keep you longer than you're willing to stay. Right. Listen. Paul's coming to hell. Listen, if we have sin in our lives today, we've got to get it out. Amen. Get it out. I, I, listen, I, you know, David, I, I'm telling you, I love David. That, God says in his Bible that David was a man, he says, my, David was a man after my own heart. And you think, well, how is that? David messed up. And he messed up many times. But David was always willing to repent. And David was always giving God praise. Right. He was always praising the Lord. Read Psalms. Amen. He, he praised the Lord a lot. Are we praising the Lord today? No place for sin in a believer's life. That's right. Just hand that. Right. Come on up. You don't hear it. Thank you. Listen. We can't do that. Jesus for sin. He says he'll have no part of us. The Bible says no one thought of sin when you're in the kingdom of heaven. We've got to remember that. What is hindering us from serving the Lord? What is hindering you from witnessing to? Think about that. Listen, we're supposed to be the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill. But are we witnessing? Are we going forward? Are we doing the Great Commission? All that is just for preachers, no. That's for you, people. Paul said we are all ambassadors for Christ. Share Jesus. And I'm going to close. Listen. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to get rid of that sin. Nail it to the cross of Jesus Christ, glory to God. And walk away from it. Don't come back to it. Many times in my life I have given, you know, given something up or I thought I had given it up on and off. And a little while later I walk back and pick it up. Don't be like I was. Don't be like I was. God loves you today. Serve him with every fiber of your being. Amen. Every. 
as he gave us our all <coughs> and he was on that cross. Why shouldn't we give us our all to him? We've got to give our all to him. Lord, we love you. I love you. And this altar's open. It's been open since the wedding. Use it. I'm telling you, if I have to ride that altar all the way to heaven, I don't care what man says or what man thinks about me. If I have to walk, ride that altar all the way to heaven, I'm going to ride it. Amen. Keep that close personal relationship with God. Don't go back. Don't be like the Galatians. They went back out into bondage. We as Christians don't need to go up in bondage. Don't let Satan do that. Yeah. Uh -huh.